Hey guys, so today's movie review is just something that I watched on Amazon Prime last night. Glenn and I were just flicking through it and thought, what shall we watch? And we scrolled across Morton Tildum's The Imitation Game starring Benedict Cumberbatch. And I haven't watched this movie since 2014, but I was like, I remember enjoying that movie. Let's give it a rewatch. And so that was the inspiration for this video today. So let's talk about it. Morton Tildum's The Imitation Game is a mix of espionage thriller and historical figure biopic, and it stars Benedict Cumberbatch as one of Great Britain's most renowned and influential mathematicians, Alan Turing. He died back in 1954 under quite tragic circumstances because he was only 41 at the time, but he was disgraced for being a homosexual and was charged with indecency. In 2013, he was given a posthumous pardon from Queen Elizabeth because of his contributions during World War II and also to maths and science and the world in general. Today, he's widely regarded as the father of modern computing and artificial intelligence. Alan Turing was a key player at Bletchley Park during World War II who had a hand in deciphering the German's Enigma code, which is where Graham's script for the imitation game prioritizes its focus. From his first interaction with Charles Dance's Commander Denniston, we establish two things, his immediate intelligence as well as his social awkwardness. It's believed Alan Turing was thought to be on the autistic spectrum. A lot of people think that he had Asperger's syndrome. Cumberbatch nuances his portrayal of Alan with numerous subtleties like lack of eye contact, inability to understand social cues like sarcasm, rhetorical questions, or flirting. It's a very three-dimensional performance. The only gripe I had with him was the fact that the first scene that he's in, he announces that he's 27 years old and he looks about 40. But Cumberbatch is doing some of his best work here. He even got an Oscar nomination for his role here, so it's a forgivable flaw. As the story progresses, we see Turing and his team trying to decipher Enigma with Alan often locking horns with his colleagues. Eventually, Alan starts building a machine which he calls Christopher, which will be vital in cracking the German's code. This was my second time watching this film. The last time was back in 2014 when it was released in cinemas, and I remembered I enjoyed it. And on a second viewing, I will say it holds up pretty well. It does take a few artistic liberties with the truth, but it is still a totally made biopic about a brilliant individual. Morton Tildum keeps the film moving with an urgent pace. You really do get a sense of the clock ticking, the assembling of the machine, the lives on the line, and the desperation to crack the code. There's some organic character growth for Turing as he learns the value of collaborating with his colleagues. He also has a charming relationship with fellow codebreaker Joan Clark, who's playing this film by Kira Knightley which adds a little sweetness to the film. All the elements of this film click together quite nicely and it builds to a very satisfying eureka moment about two thirds of the way in. Even on a rewatch, I still got goosebumps as Alan Turing had his epiphany on how to crack the code. So what else is good about the film? Well, the supporting cast are all terrific, particularly Matthew Good as Hugh Alexander and also Mark Strong who plays Stuart Menzies and he's got hair in this film. That's a rarity. I mean, it's not as real hair, but you know what I'm saying. The period aesthetic is pitch perfect. Excellent work from the costume department and production design. There's also a melodic and urgent score from Alexander Desplat, which I believe to be one of his most underrated works in any film. Yep, I love the score. As for negatives, I did mention before the script takes a few liberties with the historical events. The film has a biasness towards its subject, Alan Turing, as the one to come up with everything, all the ideas every development when in actuality it was a group effort. In fact, it wasn't even the Brits that cracked the first German Enigma code, it was the Polish Cypher Bureau, and it just gets reduced down to a throwaway line in this film. As for Graham Moore's script, I will say he does stick the landing with the message he's trying to get across. I think that sometimes it is the people who no one imagines anything of who do the things that no one can imagine. It's a lovely sentiment, but it gets hammered over the audience's head three times. We get it. Sometimes less is more. And the script overall feels a bit vanilla. It plays things just a bit too safe. The story has been Hollywooded, if that's even a word, to hit all the familiar narrative beats you would expect from a generic biopic. So it's a little uninspired structurally. Also, I didn't appreciate that Moore didn't go deeper with Alan's sexuality. We don't really get to see how Alan wrestles with the fact that he's gay. The flashbacks to him as a boy are sweet, but they don't add much substance. Again, it plays it very safe. It feels very straight friendly. And when you skirt around the truth of your focal character's sexuality, when it's their biopic, just to avoid offending the straight masses, 
It feels disingenuous. If you're going to tell Alan Turing's story, then show Alan Turing's story. This is very much a tell, don't show approach. It's not as bad as say, the depiction of Freddie Mercury's sexuality in Bohemian Rhapsody, but time might not be kind to the imitation game as it ages. So time to ask the three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Of course, this was a rewatch. Second question, am I gonna recommend it for you guys? Yes, I would still recommend this film, even though it's not 100% historically accurate. It tells a very engaging story. Kamavach is phenomenal, the supporting cast too. It's easy viewing and you learn a lot about an important and fascinating historical figure and how he ended up on our 50 pound note. Wish they'd gone a bit deeper with his personal life and sexuality, but still, I did enjoy this film. So yes, I would give it a recommendation. And third question, what score are we gonna give it out of 10? I'm gonna give The Imitation Game a score of seven out of 10. There you go guys, that was my review of The Imitation Game. But as always, this is just one bloke's opinion. I want to hear from you guys. Have you seen The Imitation Game? Did you like it? Did you not? Do you think it did Alan Turing's story justice? Whatever you guys think, be sure to let your voices be heard in that comment section down below. If you guys have enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming content. If you want to follow me on any social media, Twitter, Instagram, it's all in that description down below. And if you have any film requests for me to review, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Carefield, and I'll see you next time.